Depicted as a serpent and a dragon in scripture, Satan is the originator of lies. Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He promotes false teachings and cunningly seeks to keep unbelievers in spiritual bondage. John 8 verse 44 You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. He's also called the accuser, the one who tempts, and the deceiver. His name itself means adversary, or one who opposes, and another title, the devil, means slanderer. 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 5 For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. Revelation 20, verse 3 And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more Till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Even though he got kicked out of heaven, Satan still tries to make himself greater than God. He copies everything God does, trying to get people to worship him instead and go against God's kingdom. Satan is beyond every false cult and world religion. He'll do whatever it takes to fight against God and anyone who follows him. But Satan's fate is set. He's headed for eternal punishment in the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verse 10 The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The Bible portrays Satan as an angelic enemy of God, and consequently the adversary of those who follow God. There are many things said in the Bible about Satan, but it is important to also establish what is not said about him. Many misconceptions exist about the devil, including Satan is not a personal being, but rather is only a force of evil. He resides in and is the ruler of hell. He can do whatever he pleases. He is omnipresent. All these perspectives are incorrect and cannot be found in Scripture. False notions about Satan stem from various origins, and these origins are not from the Bible. Regarding Satan, the Bible provides the following information. Satan is a personal being, with a mind, emotions, and a will. Job 1 verses 6 and 7 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. He is a created being and is not equal to God. Satan does not rule hell. Hell was created as a punishment for Satan and his demons. Neither does Satan live in hell, as the Bible describes how he can enter heaven and roam the earth. Matthew 25 verse 41 The devil can only do what God allows. Job 1, verse 12. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Satan is not omnipresent, but he does oversee a horde of demons called the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. He uses this network to tempt and deceive people. He actively works to nullify the effect of the Word of God in people's hearts, and He blinds the intellect of those who do not believe so they cannot understand the gospel. Matthew 13, verse 3 and 4. Then He spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. 
the Bible advises Christians to be aware of Satan's schemes. Believers should resist him with vigilance and determination, recognizing his attempts to tempt and render them unproductive for the Lord. When faced with temptation, believers should submit to the Lord and resist the devil, and Satan will flee. In addition to tempting, Satan is also known as the accuser of our brothers. Revelation 12 verse 10. He takes pleasure in listing the sins of believers. However, our Lord Jesus, our advocate, defeats these accusations because he has already paid the price for our sins. 1 John 2 verses 1 and 2. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation of our sins, and not of ours only, but also for the whole world. Christians can have confidence in their salvation, because Jesus has accomplished everything for us through his death and resurrection. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Satan is referred to as the God of this age, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, and holds dominion over the world and its systems. John 12 verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. However, his authority is temporary. During the tribulation period, Satan will deceive many and empower the rise of the Antichrist, who will rule for seven years. Since Satan has always desired to be worshipped as God, this deception will involve the worship of Satan by many. Revelation 13 verses 5 through 8 And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for forty-two months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He will also attempt to destroy the remnant of Israel, but he will not succeed. Revelation 12 verses 13 through 16. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Was Satan in charge of music in heaven? Ezekiel 28 verse 13 in the KJV and the NKJV suggests that Satan might have had a connection with music in heaven. The NKJV says, The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created, but it's not entirely clear what this Hebrew text means. While there might have been such instruments in heaven, there's no other evidence to confirm it outside of this verse. Revelation 5 verse 8 and 15 verse 2 mention harps, but they don't mention timbrels or pipes. The Bible passages Ezekiel 28 verses 12 through 19 and Isaiah 14 verses 12 through 15 describe Satan before he fell. Ezekiel 28 verses 12 through 19. Son of man, Take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, 
you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings, that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples were astonished at you. You have become a horror, and shall be no more forever. He was called the anointed cherub and adorned with every precious jewel. He was described as the epitome of perfection, wisdom, and beauty, like making him the highest among angels. He was so persuasive that he convinced one-third of the angels to rebel with him. Revelation 12 verse 4 his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Even after his rebellion, not even Michael the archangel confronted him without the Lord's help. Jude 9 Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Satan's downfall was due to his pride. He didn't want to be second best, but desired to be God himself. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. Isaiah 14 verse 13. Whether Satan was the head musician in heaven cannot be definitively answered because scripture doesn't provide enough details about his specific duties there. However, considering that angels are continuously engaged in worshiping God, it's possible that Satan might have had a role in leading that worship. One thing is certain, despite his high position and close relationship with God, Satan chose to rebel, and as a result, he is destined for eternal punishment. Isaiah 6 verse 3 And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Revelation 4 verse 8 The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Revelation 20 speaks in detail concerning the final state of Satan and unbelievers. Verse 7 remarks that at the end of the thousand-year millennial kingdom. Revelation 20 verse 1, Amplified Bible. And then I saw an angel descending from heaven, holding the key of the abyss and bottomless pit, and a great chain was in his hand. The angel that will subdue Satan is anonymous. We know if it is Michael, Gabriel, or any other high-ranking angel. A Bible commentator noted this, the final importance of Satan is perhaps indicated in the fact that it is not the Father who deals with him, nor the Christ, but only an unnamed angel. However, we read about an angel coming down from heaven. It is important to note that Satan is not considered God's equal or opposite, yet God allows Satan to continue because, even in his evil, he indirectly serves the purposes of God. We read the phrases, laid hold, bound him, cast him, shut him up, set a seal on him. Satan tried to imprison Jesus in a tomb, but couldn't. However, God has no difficulty restraining Satan. Many have wondered, is this a true event? Indeed it is. The battle is literal. The false prophet is literal. The slaying of the kings and their armies is literal. Satan is literal, and his binding must be equally literal. We read that he should deceive the nations no more. The revealed primary mode of attack by Satan is deception. Therefore, the best defense and weapon against Satan is the truth found in God's word. It is evident that Satan's deceitful actions still persist, indicating that he is not confined in the manner portrayed in the passage. 
Peter stated that Satan is free to roam like a roaring lion, searching for those he can harm. Satan will be released for one last battle along with the misled nations of the world. After he is defeated, we see the result. Revelation 20 verses 9 and 10, Amplified Bible. And they swarmed up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints, God's people, and the beloved city, Jerusalem. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was hurled into the lake of fire and burning brimstone, sulfur, where the beast, antichrist, and false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. We read, Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. It is inaccurate to refer to this as a final battle, as there is no actual conflict. The outcome is predetermined, with God ultimately ending the devil and his followers for good. Following the battle, Satan receives eternal judgment and torment, together with the beast and the false prophet. Is this really eternal punishment? Yes, it is. The words mean exactly what they appear to mean. Then all unbelievers will be judged before the great white throne. Revelation 20 verse 15 states, And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. In the next chapter, Revelation 21 verse 8 adds, But as for the cowards and unbelieving and abominable, who are devoid of character and personal integrity, and murderers and sorcerers with intoxicating drugs, and idolaters and occultists who practice and teach false religions, and all the liars who knowingly deceive and twist truth, their part will be in the lake that blazes with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hell exists in a realm beyond our present realm. Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15 And I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them, for this heaven and earth are passing away. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as written in the books, that is, everything done while on earth. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades, the realm of the dead, surrendered the dead who were in them. And they were judged and sentenced, every one according to their deeds. Then death and Hades, the realm of the dead, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire, the eternal separation from God. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. Unbelievers experience ongoing torment and are unable to escape their judgment. The Bible tells us that the judge is Jesus. John 5, verses 22 through 27, Amplified Bible. For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment, that is, the prerogative of judging, to the Son, placing it entirely into His hands, so that all will give honor, reverence, and homage to the Son, just as they give honor to the Father. In fact, the one who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who has sent Him. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, the person who hears my word, the one who heeds my message, and believes and trusts in him who sent me, has, possesses now, eternal life. That is, eternal life actually begins, the believer is transformed, and does not come into judgment and condemnation, but has passed over from death into life. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, as time is coming and is here now, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will live. For just as the Father has life in himself and is self-existent, even so he has given to the Son to have life in himself and be self-existent. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is a Son of Man, sinless humanity, qualifying him to sit in judgment over mankind. The earth and the heaven fled away, Earth and heaven flee from this throne. This is not a trial, trying to determine what the facts are. The facts are in. Here is the sentencing of someone already condemned. If people are not listed in the book of life, then each one is judged according to his works. 
Those who refuse to come to God by faith will, by default, be judged and condemned by their works. Sin's lingering effects have been eradicated, including death. The last traces of sin's unlawful power are done away with. When a person refers to hell, the lake of fire is what they usually have in mind. At the end of time, Satan and unbelievers will experience the second death, in which they will be in the lake of fire. This dreadful situation is one no person would desire. This is why God has offered salvation through Jesus to anyone who will believe and patiently offers his salvation still today. John 3.16 For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is a far cry from Satan's original state. Many people believe that Satan directed the praise music in heaven because of the musical instruments mentioned in verse 13. We all know that music has tremendous power, whether for good or evil. We've seen how Satan has used music to send false messages to our minds and hearts. We must remember that music can either lift a heart to God or drag a soul to hell. As Lucifer, Satan was a shining star, the son of morning. His privileges should have made him the most thankful cherub. Satan became corrupted. Iniquity was discovered in him. The Lord then lists three sins, violence, arrogance, and irreverence. He violated the holy position in which he ministered in God's sanctuaries. One unbreakable biblical spiritual principle is that when we exalt ourselves, we will fall. Satan attempted to exalt himself, but God said he would be cast into hell. However, when we humble ourselves before God, we will be lifted up. We don't have to worry about lifting ourselves up when we humble ourselves and submit to his will. It will be taken care of by God. Luke 10 verse 18 He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. We may easily become discouraged if we only consider who Satan is and what he is capable of, yet he is a condemned person. It's simply a matter of time. When Jesus died on the cross, he demolished the devil's apparatus. Hebrews 2 verse 14 Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. So why is Satan still active? Is it because he doesn't recognize he's been out of business? The devil is running around like a chicken with its head cut off. He's dead but doesn't even realize it. But God stated, he shall be no more forever. We don't know much about Satan. He is now a condemned being who will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone one day. Until then, the Bible instructs believers to remain alert and attentive. The devil wants us to collapse like he did. But we can hold our ground. Not only has the Lord Jesus Christ saved us, but he is also the only one who can preserve us from falling. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Creator, we come before you today with humble hearts, recognizing the importance of acknowledging our weaknesses and seeing your guidance in uncovering them. As we gather as a community, help us to be open to your words and your wisdom as we pray. Lord, pride is a cunning adversary, weaving its way into our thoughts and actions, whispering lies of self-sufficiency and superiority. It blinds us to our own faults, making it difficult for us to see the beauty in others and to appreciate the blessings you have bestowed upon us. In our pride, we often forget that every good thing we have comes from you, and we unwisely believe that we have achieved success solely through our own efforts. Forgive us, dear Lord, for the times when we have allowed pride to overshadow your grace and mercy in our lives. Help us to recognize that true greatness lies not in exalting ourselves, but in serving you and helping others with humility and compassion. Teach us to follow the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, who humbled himself to the point of death on a cross, showing us the way to true humility and selflessness. Grant us the strength to resist the temptations of pride, to turn away from arrogance and vanity, and to embrace the virtue of humility. Help us to see ourselves as you see us, 
as beloved children in need of your grace and guidance. May we find joy in lifting others up, rather than seeking to elevate ourselves above them. Lord, we pray for those among us who struggle with pride in a particularly profound way, for those who are quick to boast of their accomplishments, who look down upon others with contempt, who seek validation and praise at any cost. Soften their hearts, dear God, and open their eyes to the damage that pride is wreaking in their lives and in the lives of those around them. Help us to cultivate a spirit of gratitude, recognizing the gifts and talents you have given us and using them to glorify your name. Let us not seek recognition or praise for ourselves, but rather let our actions be a reflection of your love and grace shining through us. Lord, we also lift up to you those who have been wounded by the pride of others. For those who have been belittled, grant them healing and strength. Help us to be agents of reconciliation and peace, standing up against injustice and advocating for the dignity and worth of every human being. Finally, Lord, we ask for your guidance and protection as we strive to live lives of humility and grace. Give us the wisdom to recognize the subtle ways that pride can creep into our hearts and minds and the courage to confront it head on. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be empowered to live lives that are pleasing to you, lives marked by humility, kindness, and love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Did you enjoy this video? Please check out other clips from us, and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to find out about our latest videos.